Once it has momentum, it goes straight and true. As soon as it loses that, it loses the stability, and it just goes anywhere. But so the Americans could have taken their muskets and fired directly into the roof, stuck into that uh, roof, and caught fire to the roof using musket arrows. Next. Well, we keep working and working and working, and there you go. One day, Luther clears out this area of brush, and we find this little camp. Here's where the sap is, begins. This is a sharp cliff. That's, what it, that's, the, that's the most level part. Right on this little semi-level part was a nice concentration of sharp little balls. And a continental camp, more than likely. And what did we find? A nail that has been cold hammered into the shape of an arrow point. Now, again, you got entertainment here, man. If the arrow point was found at the fort, we have confirmation of how the house caught on fire. They used fire arrows, just as Roland said, just as it said in history. It wasn't found at the fort, it was found at a camp near the entrance of the sap. Just as if Mrs. Mott came along and said, Boy, oh, this is poor looking arrows there, guys. I thought this is mine. And they said, Sure, and threw their stuff away. They abandoned this area. Next slide. There it is, conserved. Um, and you can see these artifacts and, uh, and, 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 and an exhibit at the Confederate Relic Room uh, right now. Everything I have here is the artifacts are there. Um, and it will be there until February of 2017. Excuse me. Final slide. Some question? Yeah, hold on. Okay, so there's our um, our interpretation today. Uh, Marion's guys, there were only 150 of them, so more than likely it wasn't a Marion camp. More than likely most of his guys were distributed around near the fort, the American battery, Lee and his boys were getting ready to go, and there's the sound, and now there's the forge. That's it, I think. Is that the last one? Oh, next frontiers, I should mention this. What do we do next? Well, one of the things we're having fun with is a project that uh, John Allison has been involved with, and is helping, um, is actually kind of directing this thing, but I'm going along with the fun, is to run cadaver dogs at battlefields to see if uh, there's any possibility of finding them, uh, finding burials using cadaver dogs. Uh, Dan Battle, another archaeologist, this guy's a conflict archaeologist and his name's Dan Battle, isn't that great? Um, is also uh, working with um, some people, who's, what's the lady's name? Tracy. Trace, Tracy. Tracy. Uh, runs dogs professionally for the police. She brought her dogs to Camden. So, okay. um, and uh, what you have to know about, what I didn't know, so I'm, I'm an amateur too, is that these dogs don't, don't actually pinpoint. Uh, if they look into a live body, they'll get nearby, they'll sit, and that's called an alert. And somewhere nearby is gonna be the body. Because they're looking for the scent, and that scent may have been in, in it may be actually in the trees. So they'll sometimes alert on a, on a tree rather than on the location. In any case, here's a Camden barrel we knew that exists on the Camden battlefield. There. And here's two alerts by the dogs. Pretty close. Um, this is not more than 20, 30 meters. So we're looking about five or six meters away. Um, so we took him out to Fort Mott to run him there because at Camden, we don't know where all the barrels are, but there's a lot of dead guys out there. So finding, uh, we only know a couple of them. So if they alert, we don't know whether or not they've actually alerted on something without dating it. We want to be very careful about that. At Fort Mott, there's not many casualties. So if we run them at Fort Mott and they alert, that's, that's, that's telling you something. Uh, and I'm, I'm happy to say, this is what, this is what the, uh, so there's our map of Fort Mott, and there's the alert, and there's 
where the, uh, the, the, the gate is, and that's reasonably close. And then there's another one over here where the alerted down slope, and we don't know what that is, but I had a chance to investigate that. What I was most pleased about with the alert with the dogs was that they didn't alert all over the place. Um, if they had been sitting everywhere, then I would have been a lot less uh, interested in, in those results because uh, A, we couldn't test them, B, we didn't think there'd be hardly any burials out of Fort Mott. So they ran around Fort Mott, they ran out in the woods, and they never did anything until they got right there. And she has a, a procedure she does, she brings one dog out at a time so that the dogs aren't affecting each other, influencing each other. She runs that dog and then she puts that one away and runs another dog and then and repeatedly does it, see if they both do, this, do it the same thing. Um, so it's, it's quite interesting. I'm not totally convinced, but I'm certainly not um, totally against it either. It, it fit has potential. Okay, I think that's my last slide. All right, questions?